Welcome to the lecture on introduction to our software. In this lecture, we will continue with some more introductory topics and uh, we will talk about command line data editors and say another software R Studio. So, let us try to start with one by one. The first question comes, what is a command line? Why command line? Because in order to write a program in R, there are two options that I can write the program on the command line or I can write it inside a, a script file, right. So, you have seen that when you start the R, you get this type of a screen over here and here you will see that there is a sign something like greater than. This sign, greater than sign is actually the command prompt. For example, if you try to start here R, this is here, this thing you can see. So, this is actually command line and this is the place where we try to write out the syntax or command. For example, if I want to find out the mean, I have to write down here and so on, right. So, the same thing is being uh, demonstrated here. So, this is here the command line and here we try to type our commands, right. Now, we come on another aspect. You might have used uh, some software which are menu driven. What do you mean by menu driven? That there are some icons and there you have to simply click. Whether you want to collect something, whether you want to copy something, whether you, wa whether you want to pay something. And there are some software which are not menu driven, but there you have to type the commands. So, the R software is not a menu driven software, but here you have to type the commands, right. Now, whenever we are trying to write down the commands, there are two options that the command can be written in a or it can be written in more than one line. So, single line commands and multi line commands both are possible to write in R programming. Whenever we are writing a single line program, that means one command executed the same line. And when we are trying to write down the multi line commands, that means we will try to write down or type one command at a time in the sequential order. So, whenever we are trying to write such multi line programs, it is always better to write all the commands in a single file and then try to execute the entire file in a single shot. So, that means whenever we want to write a program, the program is essentially a combination of several syntax, several commands which are written in a logical order depending on the objective of the task. Whatever we want to do it, uh, we have to write down the program. For example, if you simply want to find out the arithmetic mean, in arithmetic mean, the first step is to sum all the observation and the second step is to divide the sum by the total number of observation. So, these are two steps. So, if I want to write down a program for finding all the arithmetic mean, first of all, I have to write some lines to compute the sum and in the second step, I have to write some lines to divide the sum by the number of observation and this will complete the entire program for finding out the arithmetic mean. Now, whenever we want to write down the multi line program, it is always easier in R to write the programs in a separate file and then execute it, right. So, in order to write such programs, we have got several options. First option is that I can use the built in editor inside the R software, that is R's own editor and this software is uh, easily accessible from the R's graphic user interface window and here you simply have to come on file and then you have to write down uh, click on the new script. 
this I would like to show you here that how are you going to get it here. For example, if you come on the this R software, you can come over the file and then here you can clip over the new script. This is on the second one. And here you can type here whatever you want here, something mean of this, say variance. E R I E N S variance. Whatever you want to type, you can just type it and then you can save it and then later on you can execute it. That is the script uh, editor which is available inside the R software. Right. So, I have taken here the screenshot of the same window. So, first uh, you need to click over here at this file then you come over the new script and this will open a new window where you can type the program. And once you have uh, written the program and if you want to execute it, what you have to do? You simply have to highlight it and then press control R. For example, here if I say that I have written here, say here means, suppose if I want to find out the mean of here 1, 2 and say 3, right. So, now if you want to execute this command, that means I want to find out the mean of 3 numbers 1, 2 and 3, I simply have to highlight it and then I have to press control plus R from my keyboard. And now you will see here that in the R GUI window, it is giving me this outcome. This is nothing but 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3. So, at this stage, you may have an obvious question that how do I know that uh, mean is a command to find out the arithmetic mean? I would say do not worry. We are going to discuss all these things in the forthcoming lectures. Here, I am simply trying to demonstrate it that how the things are being done step by step. Right. So, here if you try to see using this mean function, I am simply trying to find out the arithmetic mean of 1, 2 and 3 that is 1 plus 2 plus 3 divided by 3, the number of observations. So, similarly if you have here some more lines, then you can simply highlight more than one lines together and you can execute it. And it is also possible to run the program without highlighting or the entire program in a single shot. So, as soon as we go, go further into the course, I will try to show you all these things. Okay. The second option is that we can use another software and as we had discussed in the earlier lecture that uh, we are going to use here the software called as R Studio and we had already installed it on our computer. So, here we are going to discuss that how to do all those things inside the R studio software. So, if we are going into the explanation of uh, the R studio software, first let us try to see that when I try to execute it, how it will look like. So, if you try to see on your say desktop, there is going to be icon here like this. And if you try to click over this icon, you will get here a window like this one. So, you can see here that the entire screen is divided into four sections. These four sections have got different types of utilities. So, first we need to understand what are the utilities of these four windows and then we will try to understand how to do the programming later on. So, if you try to see here, I have taken here a screenshot of the same R studio window with an objective to explain you all the things one by one. So, you can see here that this is the window where we try to type our commands. Whatever commands we want to execute either single line command or say multi line command or the entire file of the commands, we try to type over here. The second window is here like this one. Here whatever variables you have defined in the program, they will appear here. So, the advantage of using this R studio is that 
you can always see that what variable name you have given to any particular task. Third window, if you try to see here, this is a very familiar window. This is nothing but your R graphical user interface window. So, this is the same window which we obtain when we try to double click on the R icon or when we start the R software separately. Now, there is here another window here, this one, fourth one, this has different types of things. I can open here files, I can create here new folders, I can load here packages, I can do here some graphical things, I can obtain here different types of help and then I can view my different types of uh, graphics over here. Uh, he will try to explain it uh, uh, in the next uh, few slides, but here uh, what I am trying to explain you here that when you try to open the R studio software, there are four windows here, one, two, three and here four. And these four windows are trying to give you all the important information about your program in a single shot. Whereas, in case if you try to work directly on the R software, you may not have this facility. And then you may have to look into all this information one by one. I am not saying at all that, that any of this information what is being presented in the R studio is not available in R. All this information is available in R, but working with this R studio particularly for the beginners that is more easier. Right. Similarly, I am not saying again at all that, that R studio is the only software. There are some other software also, for example, one another popular software here is 10R, T I -N 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 R. That is also a free software, one can download it from the website and can uh, use it. Right, okay. Now, uh, he will come back again on the R studio software to understand that how we have to operate it. But before that, I want to show you that how the things are being done. For example, I want to load a library mass. In the earlier lecture, we had discussed that there is a library capital M, capital A and capital double S called as mass, which is from the book on S plus, which is available in the base package of R. And suppose we want to use it. So, I want to upload this library mass and inside that mass, there is some information on the variable called here as, uh, here as a bacteria. So, I want to use that uh, variable, right. So, I have to write down here three commands, library mass, attach bacteria and fix bacteria inside the brackets. Now, means obviously, you will have another question that what is the meaning of attach and fix. So, again, I would say that uh, in the uh, forthcoming lectures, we will try to explain you what are the meaning of uh, these things. But here again, as I said, my objective is simply to show you that how to use the script line, command line and this R, R studio. So, I have simply taken here these three simple commands and I will try to show you that how you can execute it over this, um, this function. So, now suppose I have typed these three commands on the R script window or inside the R studio. What I have to do? Suppose I want to execute only one command, library mass. So, I have to simply say highlight it, just highlight it and like this on your computer and after that you simply have to say run or in the R script window, you have to write control plus R or you have to type control plus R, right. Once you try to do it, you will get this type of thing in the R studio, right. So, let us try to do it over the R studio and see what are we going to get. So, I am simply trying to copy these three things into my R studio window over here and as I said, we are going to copy these things over here. So, we highlight here to execute the command library mass and then you can see here that uh, here on this side, I am trying to click. Here you have to click and this will 
execute the command library mass and you can see here the change. This I have highlighted in this window and you can see here that the command library mass is executed. Now, suppose I want to execute these two commands together. What I have to do? I simply have to highlight it and then I have to click here. And then you can see here these two commands are run together. And suppose if I want to uh, run the entire program, so one option is this, I can highlight it and then I can do it here and I can click here run. So, you can see here this is trying to give me the file of the data which is contained inside the bacteria here. Right, because fix is a command to recall the file name bacteria. So, these things I have taken here and uh, on my slides. So, you can see here, this is precisely what I am trying to see here. Now, you can see, see it more clearly that I am trying to highlight it and then in the second stage, you have to click here over this run and then you will see here the outcome which is here mass. Right, okay. The, the next aspect is this, uh, whenever we are trying to do any data analysis, we will certainly have a set of data and during the process, we would like to edit our data. So, there are different ways by which I can call my data for, for editing. One option is that I can use the data editor which is within the R package and for that, we simply have to go to the menu bar and then I have to select this edit oblique say this data editor. Once you try to do it, there will appear a window data editor and then you can choose whatever data you want. For example, if I try to show you here that this will be coming over here. Here you can see here because this is here file and then here this is here edit and inside this on the second last choice there is a data editor and if you try to open the data editor, here you have to give the name of your data. For example, if I say here MAWS mass and it will try to well, it is trying to show that uh, mass is not available. Now, why? Because we have not loaded it. So, first I have to load the library mass, only then the data will appear. Right. The same thing we have done in the R studio also. So, we will try to uh, see here that how it happens. So, you can see here I already had uh, copied these three commands over here. And so, I want to run all these things. So, I simply give over here and then you can see here that as soon as I say run, this window appears and this is trying to give me all the data contained inside the file bacteria. So, you have both the options, either you can use the R software directly for the data editing or you can use the R studio software that will also help you in the data editing. Right. Okay. So, this is the window that uh, you have uh, seen that this means appears, right. And this is all the data that is contained in the library mass. And suppose on the other hand, I have another option. Suppose I have this data set and if I want to know what is the source of this data, from where this data is coming, then I have another option. You see there is a command here, source. So, I will try to click here. This button, source, here I am trying to move my cursor so that you can see where to click. And if I try to click here, you can see here all this information comes once again. That this is the information about this file and this file also appears over here and everything can be uh, can be done in the reverse direction also. 
So, I would uh, like that you also try to experiment all these things on your computer so that you can understand it better. Now, obviously, once uh, you have uh, done a program, right, you will you will get ready for the next program. So, it, it is always better that you first clean up all the windows. Whatever variable names you have defined, whatever information you have defined, that should be cleaned up. For example, suppose I am writing a program and in which I have used a variable name say age and by age I am trying to denote the ages of some older person. Now, I am trying to use another program in which I want to find the age of some children. So, obviously, I will try to define as my natural instinct the variable name to be age and I will try to enter my data. But then there can be some contradiction that, that when I am trying to run the program, possibly it might be using the information contained in the earlier defined variable age that was containing the ages of some elderly persons. So, in order to make a good program, we have to be a little bit careful and for that we uh, should remove all the variables names whenever we are switching to write, write say another program. So, in case if you want to uh, remove this name, we have a command what is called as rm and inside the bracket you have to write down the names of those variables which you want to remove. So, there can be one variable or there can be more than one variable. For example, if I have three variables say x, y and here z, so I can write down here rm inside the brackets x, y, z separated by comma. So, rm bracket x comma y comma z and bracket closed. So, if I try to do so, then the three variables x, y, z they will be they will be removed from my workspace. Similarly, there is another command detach and this command detach detaches the object from the search path and it removes those variable from the search path which is denoted by search inside the bracket, right. And usually this can be a data frame which was attached earlier in the program or this can be a package that was earlier attached to a program, right. So, this is what we try to do. Now, in case if you want to remove everything, suppose means data frame, data type and everything, then one simple option is that you try to use the command say rm inside the bracket you can write list and then give the uh, say equality sign and then write ls and inside the bracket whatever you want to remove means everything will be removed in a single shot, right. For example, in the R studio, suppose I have uh, uploaded a package says splines and I have used it in my program and in the next stage I want to remove this package so that I can use any other package, right. So, the best option is that you simply try to write down detach package and with this colon sign you have to write say splines. So, now this command will, uh, will remove or will detach the package whose name is cisplines. So, these are some good habits whenever you are trying to write down the program. Now, we come on say okay, this another aspect and I would like to give you some more details about the RStudio software. So, let us try to see. So, this RStudio software as we had discussed earlier that is a free software that can be downloaded from the website. And this is actually a sort of interface between our software and us. Whatever information is contained in R, whatever execution are being done in R, they can be seen through R Studio also. And usually it is more helpful to work in R Studio rather than working directly into the R software. And particularly if you are beginning to learn the R software, this is more helpful because you can see each and everything just before your eyes in a single shot. 
And whenever you are trying to write down the program, you are trying to, uh, to write down the code of a program, then it is easier actually. At, a, at every step, for example, you can highlight, you can run and you can check whether your commands are working uh, fine or not. In case if you find any, uh, find any mistake, at the same step you can correct it. Right. So, as we have seen earlier that whenever we start the R studio, we have four windows. Now, our objective is that we want to learn what are these four windows indicating what type of information is being contained and, and provided by these four windows. Right. So, so, you have seen here we have four windows. So, I am calling this as window 1, this as window 2, this as here say window 3 and this here as say window 4. Right. And now, let us try to understand the information provided by each of the windows one by one. Right. So, first, first let us try to come to the window 1. Right. This is a place where we try to write down the script or in simple words, this is a place where we type our all the commands. They can be a single line command or they can be a multi-level commands or that can be entire file containing the one program. Right. So, now you try to look at the minor details of this slide. So, you can see here that uh, this is the place where we try to click to add a new script file and this is a place where we try to click to save the file and this is a place where we try to open an already existing flying file. This is a place where we click to run the program and if we want to rerun the program then we need to click over here. Right. These uh, lines can be single level, uh, single line or they can be multi lines which have to be run. So, for example, you can see here I can highlight it in the R studio software also. For example, you can see here if you try to click over here, you get here R script and then you can uh, say open here a new R script and then you can see here first script and second script both are here. This is a place where you can save the details and uh, here is the place where here by cl clicking here you can run the program. This is the place here we, where you can rerun the program. Right. Okay. So, now I come to my window number 2. Window number 2, this is called as console window or this is simply called as console. Console is nothing means earlier we had used the terminology R graphic user interface R G U I window. This is the same window over here. So, if you try to see this is the same place where you try, uh, try to write down the uh, commands and that was earlier called as command line. But now there is a difference. The difference is that you need not to type the commands on the command line but you can write it over the script window and then you can directly run it. Well, in case if you want to write the uh, program directly on the command line inside the R studio software, that is also possible, but that is not really actually needed. Okay. So, now I come to the window number 3. Window number 3, you can see here that it has different types of uh, things. For example, First, you try to look at this part. This part is writing x equal to here 1. That means, I already had defined a variable which takes value 1. So, it is trying to indicate you that there exists a variable whose name is x and which is taking the value 1. Right. Similarly, there is another icon here import data set. So, in case if you already having a data set that you want to analyze, you can click over this window 
and can import the data set directly in the RStudio software and which can be used further in the execution of a program over this data set. Right. And in case if you want to uh, erase any of the data on, and that is already stored in this window, you have to click over here and the stored values can be, can be raised from here itself. Right. And similarly, there is another icon here, history. History will try to uh, give you an idea what are the things that you used earlier. They are not existing in the current session, but earlier whatever variable name, data sets, packages, whatever you have used, it will try to give you the details about those things. For example, now if I, if I try to uh, use it here directly on the say here R studio software. So, for example, if I try to take here say write x equal to 1 and uh, say here y equal to here 2, right. And suppose if I try to run this. So, I can, so now in this window number 2, you can see here that it is assigning the values x equal to 1 and x equal to 2. And now this window number 3, it is trying to give us the same thing over here means I am trying to move my cursor here so that you can see that here is here x and here it is 1, it is here y, it is here 2. And earlier if you try to use the, the information which I have used the data set on bacteria that is also given here which is trying to tell us that there are 22 sorry 220 observation of uh, 6 variables and if you want to see it just click over here and you can see all this data over here, right. So, you can see that how convenient it is uh, to work with uh, this RStudio. Now, if you try to click over the history, you can see here that these are the commands which we have used earlier like a library mass, library bacteria and means uh, we have assigned the values here x equal to 2, y equal to 2 and so on and then finally, I had viewed the uh, the, uh, the file name bacteria. So, this is trying to give us the history of the commands which I have used earlier, right, okay. But now, we come to our next window which is our fourth window, right. So, now you can see here that uh, there are different icons. One here is file that will give you an idea about the file. And there is another icon plot, another is here packages, then there is help and then there is viewer, right. So, as soon as you click first on say here viewer, whatever is the outcome of your program, say for example, any graphics or say any numerical values that will appear in window number 4 over here. Right. I will try to demonstrate it by using a simple example over here and similarly, if I try to give you uh, some details quickly, help menu helps us in finding about the details about a function or anything whatever you want to know in R. For example, earlier we had used different types of commands to find to take the help from the R software, but now this can be done very easily over here. I will try to demonstrate it. And then here there is a icon packages. This will when you try to click over here that will try to show you that what are the packages which being used in this session. Then there is another here plots. This plots will show you whatever is the outcome if you have created any plots they will be shown over here. So, let us try to first see here what really happens. For example, here you can see here first you try to click on the first one which is here files. It is trying to give us different details that whatever are the files which are being used over here. Here if you try to click there will be some uh, details about here the plots, but still we have not created any plot. So, so there is no outcome over here, but we, we will certainly try to do it. Then it is here trying to use, uh, uh, here it is trying to give us the details about the different types of packages which are uh, being available in the software and whatever package you want to use, you simply have to click here. 
for example, here I can suppose the first name is coming here as a boot. This is about the bootstrapping functions, right? So, suppose I want to use here another here function class. So, I have to simply class it here, let us say simply click here. So, now earlier if you try to so, uh, we have uh, learned different types of command uh, to upload a particular library or a particular packages, but inside the R studio they are they can be uploaded just by the use of a uh, click, right. Similarly, if you the fourth icon here is help. So, you can see here what this help contains the same website that we had uh, seen in the earlier lectures. And suppose if you want to know about any function or say anything, you can simply type here few words. So, for example, if I want to know about histogram, I am trying to uh, type here say histogram and then it is trying to give you here that these are the different help available with the histogram. And simply if, if I want to print here say histo just over here, you can see the same thing over here, right. So, now let us try to come back to our slides. So, you can see here that this is the same thing which uh, we have seen. So, these are the means you can see here that there are different say install, say update and say and send so on, right about the packages, right. So, and then, and then you have to keep in mind that unless and until you take over the packages what you want to use, these packages will not uh, remain as active. And if there is uh, additional package that you want, that you have to first download it and then it will appear in this list, right. Now, we come to the fourth window and we try to see how to use this help. For example, whatever help you want, you have to just type here few words. For example, if I want to know about histogram, I will simply type here HIST and it is trying to give me here all the details what are available with the histogram. So, I would request you that you please try to type all these commands yourself and then try to use some more commands from your common sense and then try to see what do you get, right. Now, let me take a simple example and try to illustrate the use of all the things whatever I have explained up to now in this lecture. Suppose I have some data which is given over here, which contains three different values 1, 2 and 3 and suppose I have obtained this data and suppose I want to create a histogram, right. So, let us try to first enter this data and then we will try to create the histogram. So, what we try to do here, before I try to do something, you have to keep in mind that in the first window, you have to type here the in input the data and you have to give the commands over here. So, what I have done here, I have given the data here and the command for creating the histogram like as here like this. For example, I have given all the values inside a variable say here x and then I am trying to create a histogram of here x. Once I have typed this thing, then I will click I will try to highlight these things and then I will try to uh, click on the icon run, right. And then as soon as I do here run, these things will appear in the window number 2. This I will try to show you. And in the window number 3, whatever the values I have stored here inside the variable x, they will appear and it will not only give us the values but it will also give us the nature of the data. For example, it is show, uh, showing here NUM, that means number, these values are number. The other alternatives can be, they can be alphabetics or they can be alphanumeric or they can be some logical values and so on, right. Now, and in the fourth window, you will see that this uh, output appears, right. For example, here you can see here a histogram which is appearing in this window. Now, in case if you want to save this window, either you can copy and paste or you can uh, click over export and then we, it will ask you to save this as an image, for example, JPEG file or say PNG file or save as PDF or you simply want to copy it so that you can paste, in, paste it in say in some other software and all these things will come over here. And in case if you want to de delete this graph, you have to simply click over this last icon. Right, okay. So, 
Now, let us try to first uh, create this graphic, right. So, if you try to see, I have uh, typed here these two lines in which I am trying to denote this set of data and this data is being contained inside a vector here x. Well, you may uh, like to know that what is here c that we will try to discuss later on, but here I can uh, say inform you that c is a command to combine all the values uh, like this one inside one vector. So, what now you have to do? You have to concentrate wherever I am trying to move my cursor. So, you see now you have two options. Either you try to run these two lines one by one or if I try to highlight both the lines together, both the lines will be executed at the same time. So, the first step is to write all the programs and now I am trying to run the program. So, I try to come over here. Now, as soon as I press here, click, you have to keep an eye what happens in the remaining three windows and then we will try to discuss it. You see, now I am cl clicking it 1, 2 and 3, right. Now, first look let us come to the window number here too, which is the console window. You can see here, which I am highlighting that the same command which was executed from window 1, this appears here. This is equivalent to typing both the commands in the R GUI window and then executing them and executing them one by one. Now, in this window number 3, you can see here, you can see here that it is giving me all this information. Please try to concentrate on my cursor. This is here the variable x, its nature is being written as num, that means this is a number. And here it is trying to give me that this is a vector of 1 by 13. And it is and the values contained in the lecture are, sorry the values contained in this vectors are given here. Now, this is here the fourth window where the histogram is created that you can see over here. Now, suppose you want to zoom it, you can zoom it by, by clicking over here and suppose I want to save it. Now, you can see here I have different option. I can save it as image for example, JPEG file or say PNG file, I can save it here as say here in the PDF format or I can simply copy it here, something like control C, right. And similarly, if you try to see here, that if I want to remove this graphic from say here, I simply have to click here and it is asking me, are you sure you want to clear all the plots in the history? I will say yes. Right. So, now you can see that uh, when I am trying to work with this uh, uh, with this R studio, all the things can be done in the same uh, say screen. Now, I try to do the same thing in the R window. So, if you can see here, I am simply trying to first enter my data as here x and then I am trying to type here the command to, to create the histogram. So, I have to type it again here and then you will see here this histogram appears here. But you can see here that uh, now if you want to know that what is here x, you can type here x and it will give you that what is here x value, but inside the R studio all this information that can be viewed in a single say screen. So, that is the advantage of working with R studio. Right. So, uh, now I will stop here and uh, I would request all of you that you please try to uh, do some experiments with the softwares on the same lines which I have explained you and try to get acquainted with the basic fundamentals and the introductory part of this lecture. Now, from the next lecture, we will try to see how to do different types of calculation in the R software. Till then, goodbye.